Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing and welcome to part five of our CME CNC Rostock Max V 3.2 build series. If you haven't been following along to date, now's a good time to pause it and go back and watch the previous episodes in the series so that you are caught up with where we are at in the build guide. Up to this point we have finished steps 1 through 19 and we're going to be starting on step 20. If you are not familiar with CME CNC's line of Delta printers from their little ones all the way up to their huge Artemis, I suggest you click on the link down below and go give them a look. They make some of the world's best Delta printers and they are fun kits to put together. So with that, let's do it. Okay, so we're going to start this episode at step 20. And we're going to work through getting our towers installed onto the base. The components that you're going to need, of course, are your three towers. And then you're going to need the long red and two black 12 gauge wires, as well as the two white thermistor wires. And of course, the base that we've already assembled. Tools for this, you'll need a 530 seconds hex driver. And you may need a number two Phillips in case you need to loosen up any of the parts that we've put together to be able to get things to fit through nicely. So with that, the first thing that we're going to do is take and label, and I've already done this with a Sharpie, but we're going to take and label. Yep. So the first thing we're going to do is switch over to our other camera. There we go. So the first thing that we want to do is use a Sharpie or other permanent marker and label your three towers as X, Y, and Z. And you're going to probably want to do that on both sides just to make it easier. And while not recommended in the manual, what I suggest doing is taking a tissue or a brush and brushing out the T-slot as well as checking the ends and make sure that there's no burrs or anything left over from manufacturing that are going to be sharp and rub against belts or wiring going through there. Mine were pretty clean, um, but I did brush out just a little bit of uh, aluminum shavings out of one of the rods. So we're going to start with the Z rod here, and I'm going to set these others aside. for now. And we're going to separate out our red cable. We're going to start at the top end of the Z-Rod and fish that down the hole in the middle like so. Can you want to try to keep it straight so that it rubs in as little as possible uh, even though those holes are deburred. It is a little bit stiff to get through there but it will make it if you try. And for now you just want a little bit out of the other side because that's going to be down and we can pull more through later. So let's just coil this leftover up for now. And we'll set this one aside. As done. We're going to grab the X tower next, and we're going to run, do the same thing with one of the two long black wires. Just feeding it down through the top and just leaving ourselves a couple of inches at the bottom. And the last one that we're going to wire here is going to be 
dy. There we go. Now this one's going to be a little bit trickier uh, because it's going to be much tighter trying to get the through there. You're going to have to run both the, the black wire through as well as these two white ones. So what they suggest is to feed the white ones through first. Now you notice on the white cables there are two ends that are ready to be peeled off, uh, that are stripped back just a hair and ready to be pulled off. And there are two ends that are pre-crimped. You want to have the pre-crimped ends at the top and pull these other ones through. So you're going to start off by feeding the white ones through. Okay, so we're just going to pull that out. I'm going to pull this one out a little bit further. And now the fun part begins. We need to we need to get this black one through the same hole. So we're going to hold that in place and we're going to just try to force that in. Okay, now that it's through, I want to pull it out so it's roughly the same length as the other one, too. Like so. And these are done. Let's coil this back up here at the top. And we can move on to the next step. Now, the reason I pulled this one through a little bit further than the other two was because since there's multiple cables going through, if one of them got caught and pulled back, I didn't want it to pull the other one out, so I wanted a little bit of extra room. Okay, so we're going to set these aside, and we're going to move on to step 21 here. Now, for step 21, we're going to focus on the Z tower, which is going to be right here. You want to kind of line up your T-slot nuts here so that they are facing vertical. We're going to grab our Z-Tower and see if I can slide this back a little bit. We're going to chase that wire around a little bit and we're going to try to guide this in on top of those T-nuts. We're going to want to pull the wire through. It doesn't tell us how much wire to pull, but I know this needs to make it over to the power supply over there. So we're just going to feed this through a little bit more at a time. So that there is enough to get down there. And give ourselves a little bit of extra. Tuck this off. Okay, now we're going to stand this back up. And we're going to tighten down these T-nuts. Now I'm not tightening them down super tight at this point. I'm just tightening them snug because we may need to adjust those later. And 
we are done with the Z. Okay, next we're going to move on to the Y tower over here. So let me rotate this around. And we're going to repeat the same process, except for with this one, we've got the additional wiring coming through for the thermistor. So I'm going to pull that out of the way. going to get that lined up so that you can hopefully see it. And we're going to rotate this one more time over here. And we're going to add the X tower. Um, this time to make my life a little bit easier, I am going to feed more of this through since we know that it's going to need it. And I'm going to feed it through to about there. So I'm going to go ahead and push more of this through since we know it's going to need it. Um, it's a note I'm going to put back for possibly an update to the manual so that we can see if we can get a, a note in the manual about how much wire to actually pull through at each step. We'll tighten these screws. And we are now done with step 22. We are now getting taller than the camera. This is going to start getting challenging to film since the Top of the towers are way up here. Okay, at this point, we have gone all the way through steps one through 22 now, where we have the base built and the wiring ran all the way up to the top. And we have the towers installed and attached down at the base. So starting in the next episode on step 23, we're going to start doing the wiring down here to the power supply and keep moving from there. So thank you all for watching. If you like what we're doing here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you can get notified when the next episode of the CME CNC Rostock Max 3.2 build series is posted. Also, if you're doing any shopping online, I do have Amazon and Matter Hackers affiliate links down below if you're shopping at either of those two places. I would appreciate if you consider using the links. It doesn't cost you anything at all, and it helps me keep the channel running. Also, a special thanks to CME CNC for providing the Rostock Max for me to build for you in this series. So with that, I bid you aloha, and we'll see you next time.